Genesis chapter number 41. Today, as we begin to wrap up, or we do wrap up this series that we have been engaged in this summer, entitled Dreamers, about the life of Joseph. And I have to say, I have enjoyed this probably more than any other series I think I have preached for a very long time. One of the most amazing characters in the Old Testament, this young man by the name of Joseph, and I'm believing God is going to speak to you here today. How many will receive that shout, amen? Now, I'm going to go with you to the book of Genesis, chapter number 41. Again, we're standing as we go to the Word today, only because this is the inspired Word of Almighty God. Amen. We honor, we reverence His Word. Amen. Everything exists by His Word. Amen. Nothing, nothing happens without the Word of God being spoken. So verse 39 is where I would like to go with you. Genesis chapter number 41 and verse number 39. If you have it, say amen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God hath shown you all of this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. So you will be over my house, and all my people will be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took the signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in the garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck and had him ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said in verse 44 to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Amen. This is the final session of this series called Dreamers. I'm calling it the prize of the dreamer. We've talked about the profile. We've talked about the process. We've talked about the pit. We've talked about the prison. We've talked about the perspective and the promotion but now let's talk about the prize what do you say amen praise God you may be seated this morning let me ask you in this house how many of you would consider yourself an impatient person let me see you raise your hand how many of you would consider your spouse and no I don't don't answer that you can't I, I'm impatient I will tell you that I am very impatient I don't like to wait on people I don't like, I'm just being transparent. Is that all right? I don't like to wait on things. I don't like to wait in line. If I'm going to order something from Chipotle, I do it on my phone and it's waiting for me when I get there. Yeah, I don't wait in line. I am a very impatient person. Now, I got to work on that. I get it. I got to work on that. I think it's because we live in a society that has trained us to receive instant gratification. We live in a society where everything is done for us immediately. I mean, you can pop a frozen meal into a microwave and three minutes later you've got roast beef and mashed potatoes. Well, you don't really. I wouldn't call that mashed potatoes. I'd call that some kind of a, I don't know what it is. But you don't even have to go to the bookstore to buy a CD anymore. Just pull out your phone and you got all the music that you want right there. In fact, it was funny. The other day, my, my wife was talking about getting Wes a CD. And Wes looked at her and said, Mom, why would you buy a CD? I've got Spotify. For you that over 30, Spotify is what <laughs> you can have any song that you want instantaneously. And you don't even have to listen to the songs that you don't like. It's not like the radio. I mean, we, we, we stream music. We stream movies. I mean, everything in our society is instantaneous. But I believe that some of the best things in life don't come instantaneously. In fact, some of the best things in life you have to wait on. You have to wait on. 
In fact, I guarantee that if I were to give you the choice between a pre-made frozen meal and roast beef and mashed potatoes that have simmered in the slow cooker for five hours in its own juice with gravy. I'm making some of you hungry. I need to get off of this quick. I'm going to lose about half of my congregation in about five seconds. Sit down. I guarantee you would choose the slow cooked meal every time. Because there's something about simmering. There's something about cooking slow that brings out the flavor, that brings out the natural juice of whatever it is that you're cooking. There's something about time that makes everything better when you are willing to wait. Now, I'm going to be very deliberate in what I say because we've read the text about our main character, Joseph, and he is standing in the prize of his dream. I mean, think about this. He has been given now charge over all of Egypt. He is second in command only to Pharaoh himself. He rides in Pharaoh's chariot, and every Egyptian bows when Joseph rides by. He's been given the ring of Pharaoh, which signifies he has the authority of the king of Egypt. So Joseph literally has walked in to everything that he saw in his dream. He's, he's 30 years old. But the key is, it took him 13 years to get there. And I think a lot of us, what we like is, we get a dream from God, we get a desire from God, and we want it to happen in the next six months. And when it doesn't happen in the next six months, we get angry, we get frustrated at God saying, God, what are you doing? And, and, I, and I'm, I know you don't do this, but a lot of Christians, they bawl and they squall and they get angry at God. Why isn't my dream coming to me? I don't know about you, but I don't like it when my kids whine. And I don't think God likes it when his kids whine. Just because your dream does not happen in six months or a year or even two years does not mean that God is not going to fulfill your dream. You sometimes just simply have to be patient enough to wait on God to do what He needs to do and mold you, mature you, and make you into the man, the woman that you need to be. Because if you walk into your dream prematurely, you are not going to receive the benefits that God wants you to have. Amen. You've got to be willing to simmer. You've got to be willing to be in the crock pot of life, the slow cooker of life. Because the, and some of you are there right now, and I feel like I'm, I know that I'm on point. You are in the slow cooker, and you don't like it. You want to be popped in the microwave, and you want to come out, and bam, everything is instantaneous. That's not the way that it goes with God. Because you see, time is of no essence to God. A day with the Lord is what? A thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. God does not operate on our calendar. He's not operating on our time frame. But the great thing about Joseph, I love what the psalmist said. Look over in Psalm chapter number 105. The psalmist said, he said, a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, and he was laid in iron until, look at this, the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. You know what kept Joseph going? When he was sold into slavery by his own brothers like an animal? What motivated him when he was sitting shackled in the dungeon? What kept him going when he was lied about? When he was conspired against, when the butler who promised, I promise, Joseph, when I get out, I'm going to remember you. I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to tell Pharaoh about you. And, and the butler completely forgot about him for two solid years. What kept him going? 
When the dream was not coming to pass, it's what the Word says right here. The psalmist said, it was the Word of the Lord that made Joseph into the man who he was to be. Because at the end of the day, Joseph knew God had spoken. And when God speaks, God is not a man that he should lie. And he's not the son of man that he should repent. Hath he spoken and will he not make it good? Hath he said it and will he not do it? I'm telling you, the only thing that can him going was a word from Almighty God. And the only thing that's going to keep you going when you are in the slow cooker of life is when you know that you know that you know that God has spoken to you and that they, God given desire is in the belly of your soul. Brother, you can endure anything when you know you have heard from Almighty God. Come on, somebody shout amen. It is the word that is going to keep you. It is the word that is going to prevail. It is the word that is going to preserve you. It is the word that is going to cause you uh, to overcome when somebody lies about you uh, and somebody rejects you and somebody abuses you uh, and somebody locks you up uh, and the devil puts all kinds of stupid setbacks uh, in front of you. You can say, devil, you're a liar. I am standing on the word of Almighty God uh, because at the end of the day, it is only what God has said that makes the difference. It doesn't matter what grandpa said. It doesn't matter what auntie said. It doesn't matter what the pastor on TV said. All that matters is what God has said. And if God said it, God's going to do it. Don't you doubt it. Don't you run from it. Don't you get all and despair and discouraged. If God said it, he will perform it because God will not go back on his word. Amen. Hallelujah. My God, I could give an altar call right now and the Lord has spoken to your heart. That word that you have will come to pass. Touch somebody, say it's coming. It's coming. So my objective is to discover what does this look like. When you get to the point where you receive the prize of your dream. Three things, and I want you to keep your Bible open with me as we examine the text together. And the first of which is found in verse 41. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've set you over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. He arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Made him ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried, bow the knee. The first thing that you will experience when you are living in your dream is this, elevation to a higher position. Elevation to a higher position. Think about this. Just a few moments ago, Joseph was in jail. Joseph was chained up. Now, all of a sudden, he is riding in the second chariot of Pharaoh, and everybody is bowing. You talk about an elevation. Now, let me set this up, if I may. Pharaoh, the reason that Joseph is even here is because Pharaoh had a dream. God gave him this dream of two cows that come out of the river. One of them is well-fed, fat, healthy. The other one is skinny, malnourished, and about to die. And the skinny, malnourished cow devours the fat and the healthy cow. And then you, Pharaoh wakes up. You ever have one of those dreams that you wake up and say, what in the world was that about? I had one last night. Weird. And so the next night, God gives him another dream. In this dream, a fat, healthy, robust ear of corn, juicy, best of the harvest is seen. And then there was a skinny, rotting, almost dead ear of corn. And the dead ear of corn devours the healthy ear. And so Pharaoh again wakes up, does what any king would do. Calls the wise men, calls all of his advisors, tells them the dream. What does this mean? None of them can interpret the dream. I'll tell you why. Because when God speaks... And God gives a dream. Those who are not right with God do not have the ability to discern what God is saying. 
So don't go to somebody that is not filled with the Spirit of God and ask them for advice on what they think God wants you to do. Go to somebody that's walking in faith and walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. They don't know. And so as the butler pours another glass of wine for Pharaoh, he says, oh, I remember now. Two years ago, there's a Hebrew that I was in jail with, and he interpreted my dream. And so Pharaoh calls Joseph out of the pit, out of the dungeon, and calls him into the palace. And of course, because of the Spirit of God that is on Joseph, he is able to interpret the dream. And he says, Pharaoh, the dream is very simple. Egypt is going to experience seven years of blessing, seven years of bounty, seven years of healthy harvest. And that's going to be followed by seven years of dearth and seven years of famine. And so therefore, you need to appoint someone that is going to collect the abundance of the blessing of the seven years so when the famine comes we will have enough to eat and survive and Pharaoh though he is a polytheistic and a paganistic king recognized the power and the presence of God on this young man and he said Joseph you are that man and I am appointing you into this position because of what God has showed unto you I want you to write this in your notes Joseph's elevation was divine divine and not demanded it was not something that joseph asked for joseph did not demand a position joseph did not get up there and want a title because here's the thing my friend those people who demand a position in life are generally the ones who don't deserve to be in that position those people listen if you're in this room and you are doing your best to manipulate your way to the top and you're trying your best to make a position and to elevate yourself and climb the ladder yourself i'm going to tell you it is never going to happen because the only elevation that is real is elevation that comes from almighty god and when god elevates you and god puts you in a position brother there is no demon in hell that can Ever take you out of that position when it is divine my friend there is nobody on the job there is no boss there is no co-worker there is no downsizing of the company that can take you out of that position because when God puts you there brother he puts you there to stay and nobody can do anything about it somebody shout amen Elevation comes from God and comes from God alone. Look what Daniel said. Daniel said in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21 that God is the one who removes kings. God is the one who sets up kings. Amen. God is the one who gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Listen, friend, I believe there are so many people that are waiting and depending on somebody to put you in position position nobody is going to do it it's time to get on your face before God and get in the presence of God and get the Holy Ghost deep inside of you and brother when you get the favor of God he is going to elevate you to that position where your dream is going to become a reality somebody shout amen don't wait on anybody problem is we have a tendency to be more concerned about the applause of men then we do the approval of God. We want somebody else to pick us up. Oh, come on now. We want somebody else to elevate us. And so we try to shoulder up to the who's who and we try to make connections with the people that have gone places and done things and we try to make amen those appointments but I want to tell you friend nobody can put you in the position where your dream is being fulfilled you know what because if man puts you there guess what man can take you out I said oh hallelujah I've known preachers. They've got agents that put them, amen. I've heard of this. They put them in positions and they, 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 they put them in places where they can preach and where they can minister. But the problem with that is that agent can put you there, but that agent can also take you out. And I'm telling you, church, we, we are living in a day now. We have got to be led by God and God alone. Amen. I'm not here because somebody put me here. I'm here because the Spirit of God spoke to my heart in 2009 
where have I planted you? I said, God, you planted me with Lysia. And it was after that moment that God opened the position. Brother, I'm telling you, when you wait on God and let God do it, amen, there is no storm, there is no fury, there is no wind. I can never blow you out of that position because appointments are divine and they are not demanded. Amen. Hallelujah. Job security comes from God's security. The more secure you are in God, you will always have a place where God is going to use you. Let me talk to you that are looking to minister. You're looking to preach. You're looking to sing. Amen. Listen, don't you wait on somebody to open the door for you. You get into the prayer closet and shut the door and allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come on you. Because when you allow the anointing to come on you, a man's gift, the Bible said, is going to make room for him. And as long as your gift is anointed, you will always have a place to preach and you will always have a place to sing. Because ministry is not a business. It is an anointing that comes from Almighty God. Hallelujah. Joseph was elevated because he did what nobody else could do. These wise men came in, could not discern the dream. They could not do what was needed to do. But when Joseph came in, he was able to do what needed to be done that would elevate him into that position because the Spirit of God was upon him. And you see, friend, when you get in the presence of Almighty God, God is going to show you things that nobody else can see. And I know I'm preaching old school this morning, but I still believe in getting in the presence of God and hearing from God. I still believe in shutting the door and letting the Spirit of God show you things that nobody else can see. You know why? Because when you see things that others can't see, God will then empower you to do things that others can't do. And when you do those things that others can't do, it is that then that is recognized by man, and they then will see this is a man and this is a woman that's got supernatural ability, and it is that supernatural ability that is going to bring you up to a high your position. Brother, I believe it's the children of God that all got to occupy the highest positions on the job, in politics, in areas that are de determining the culture. We are the people that have the anointing and the favor of Almighty God. Amen. Those who are living their dreams are only doing only what God has called them to do. Don't do what everybody else tries to do. I said, don't do what everybody else tries to do. So when you're living your dream, you're elevated to a higher position. Now, he interprets the dream. And the dream comes to pass. If you look in verse number 47 of chapter 41, seven plenteous years were brought forth by handfuls. Verse 49, so abundant was the blessing that Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering. It was without number. It was so blessed, so abundant. And so he begins now to store up the grain and store up the corn. And so blessed are they that the other nations around them that are experiencing famine, they begin to come and they begin to feed off of the blessing of Egypt because they had nothing that was in store that they could feed off of. Let me just sidestep if I may and tell you, how many believe the world around us is in a spiritual famine? Let me see you raise your hand. Amen. We're living in a day right now when people are so destitute and the problem is the one place that they need to come. The one place they need to be is the place they avoid because the only place they are going to get out of famine is in the house of Almighty God. And I believe the church, hear me now, ought to be the one place that the drug addict and the prostitute and the somebody that is laying on the street that is in a spiritual dearth and famine, they ought to come into this house and they ought to be fed by the presence and the anointing of Almighty God. They ought to be fed by the love and the mercy of the people of God. They ought to come in and know that their 
famine is over amen but so many times they come in and they're judged and they're criticized and they're rejected or they feel out of place or they feel like they don't belong let me tell you something this is not a hospital amen for those that are well this is a hospital for those that are sick and those that are well ought to be the ones in triage that are reaching out to the sick and the dying and the destitute my God this is not a haven for us to be able to rejoice in God's grace this is a hospital for those that need God's grace and this is the time that the church needs to step up and feed a world in famine amen my God we need to feed them so that sets up an interesting encounter look in chapter 42 chapter 42 and verse 1 because the nations around are coming to Egypt to be fed Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt and Jacob said to his sons why are you looking at each other why are you just sitting there he said I've heard there's corn in Egypt get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die and Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt this is about to get good not only number one is the prize of your dream an elevation to a higher position how many desire God to elevate you in life let me hear you say amen don't try it yourself let God do it let God do it but number two is vindication from your enemies opposition look in verse 6 Joseph was the governor over the land and he it was that sold to all the people of the land and Joseph's brethren came and look at this bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth does that sound familiar 13 years ago Joseph stood in front of these boys and said I saw ten sheaves that bowed down to my sheaf I saw ten stars that bowed down amen this now is the fulfillment of what Joseph saw in his dream when he was 17 years of age and now he is sitting on the throne and now the same brothers that hated him the same brothers that sold him like a dog into slavery the same brothers that threw him into the bottom of a cistern are now bowing on their face before the brother that they said would never amount to anything can I tell you God has a way of turning the table on those who oppose the dream that is inside of you and I'm just going to say it right now there is coming a day when everybody that has stood in your way everybody that has said you will never amount to anything everybody that has said you are a worthless person everybody there is coming a day when God is going to turn the table and they are going to come and they are going to see the dream that God put inside to you and they are going to recognize that what they did was wrong and they are going to see the favor and almighty God upon your life somebody receive a shout amen hallelujah but the thing is you can't vindicate yourself now I can only imagine what's going through Joseph's head right now he could have eaten that they, they didn't know that they were bowing before Joseph they didn't recognize this boy they didn't know that this was their younger brother can I just throw this at you when you walk in the blessing and favor of God 
years down the road, people won't even recognize who you are anymore because of the changes that God has made. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking, I am not about to stay in this same position right now. I believe God is transforming me into somebody that I have never been. And it's going to be such a transformation, they won't even recognize who you are. Amen. Joseph could have told you so. He could, have, he could have thrown at them everything they threw at him. He could have spoken to them like they spoke to him. And let me tell you, I know, I know, I know. When somebody opposes you and somebody stands in your way, the natural fleshly reaction is for us to lash out at them and for us to be able to do to them what they have done to us. But let me tell you, church, we are not living in the flesh. How many believe we are living in the Spirit? And the Holy Ghost said, if you are walking in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, which means you will not. Amen. You will not cast a men a stone at them you will not speak evil of them you will not vindicate yourself you know why because God can vindicate you so much better than what you will ever vindicate yourself so step back and say God they're in your hand you do it I can't you do it and God will bring them to justice in his time somebody shout amen that's why the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and verse 29, Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I feel the witness of the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody in this room, in your heart, you are thinking, if I could just ever get my hands on that slimy. And there's other choice words that are going through your mind. If I could ever get my hands, if I could give, ever give him a piece of my mind, if I could ever tell him what I think, if I could ever put him in his place, and I'm telling you according to the word, amen, the Bible said, do not to him as he hath done to me. You know why? Because God is the one that is going to render to every man according to their works. And if you try to take it out of the hand of God, then God's going to let you do it, but it's going to fall flat on your face. God will vindicate indicates you and they will understand that what they've done is wrong how many know what I'm talking about am I telling you the truth is it sometimes hard you see the Bible said as these men came look in verse 21 they said we are guilty concerning our brother Joseph didn't say a thing they simply came into the presence of God, not even knowing it was the presence of their brother. And they were convicted by what they had done. Church, look at me. You can never convict your enemy like the Holy Ghost can convict your enemy. I said you can never convict your enemy like the Holy Ghost can convict your enemy. You can give them a piece of your mind if you want to, and they won't be convicted. You can get on Facebook and you can throw up all you want to uh, and they won't be convicted. But the moment they begin to see the presence of God uh, is all over you, suddenly they will be convicted uh, and they will understand that what I have done is wrong. And I'm telling you right now, the power of God is saying, let me do the vindication because I'm going to raise you up. And everybody that said you can't, they will see you do what they said you cannot. And they will see you rise to some place they said you could never rise because they they didn't put you there. God put you there. Somebody shout amen. Romans chapter 12. The Bible said recompense to no man evil for evil. He said provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible. I love how Paul put that in there. Because sometimes it's not possible. He said be at peace. Live peaceably. With all men, dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. Why? Because vengeance is mine. And I will repay, saith the Lord. And everybody in this house that receives that promise, let me hear you shout amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you shout amen. 
Stop plotting your vengeance. Stop plotting what you're going to say. And start praying for the anointing. Amen. Stop chasing your enemy. And start chasing the anointing. Because there's coming a day. They're going to see the hand of God on your life. Hallelujah. Say elevation. Say vindication. Prize number three. The realization of God's intervention. I wish I had more time to tell the whole story. This is an amazing account. But Joseph reveals himself finally to his brethren. When he can hold back no longer, he reveals himself. And as they see the error of their ways, and they now are fearful because Joseph has the power to take them out. And they know it. But I love how Joseph responds in verse 7 of chapter 45. The Bible said, God sent me, Joseph said, before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but it was God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord to all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. You see what Joseph was saying, brothers, he said, I know that you think you're the one that brought me into Egypt. I know you think you're the one that abused me and did what happened to be done. But I'm telling you, it wasn't you. It was God that brought me here to Egypt. And God had to use slavery. God had to use prison. God had to use lies. And God had to use conspiracy. But he brought me to the place that I am right now where I am changing the world. Can I tell you, my friend, I know that when you arrive at your dream, you will look back and you will realize everything you've gone through in life has been part of the process that has led you to where you are and God has been faithful every step of the way he has been there in the pit he has been there in the prison he has been there in the midst of lies and it's all been part of the process of your life and the process of your dream it is God that has been there and what the devil meant to destroy you God is going to turn it around and he's going to discover and develop the dream that is inside of you. Genesis 50 and verse 20. Fast forward, their father dies and the brothers are afraid now of what Joseph will do that dad is out of the way. But he said this and I love this. Look at the scripture. He said, you thought it evil against me. But God meant it for good. He said, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it for good. I think Joseph recognized the tactics and the strategy of the enemy. God took those same tactics, that same strategy, and he turned it around. And he used it for the good and for the development and the fulfillment of the dream of Joseph. And let me tell you right now, some of you are, the, the enemy has got a strategy to take you out. But I'm speaking by the power of the Holy Ghost. God is going to take his strategy. God is going to take the tactics of the enemy. And he is going to turn it around. And he is going to use it for the good of your life. And the anointing is not going to be blocked by what the devil tries to throw at you. Because the anointing is going to destroy the works of the devil. And so therefore, God is about to make Make the greatest turnaround in your life right now because the tactics have been destroyed. They are out of the way and God is about to take them and he's about to turn it and into good for your life. Somebody receive it. Shout amen. Because the Bible said as I close, Romans chapter number 8 and verse 28, you know this. We know that all things, shout all things. That means the trial. That means the setback. That means the difficulty. That means the disappointment. It all works together for good. Everybody shout the word good. Touch your neighbor, say he's working for my good. Touch me, your neighbor, say he's working for my good. I said he's working for my, come on team. He's working for my good. 
I said, he's working for my good. I said, he's working for my good. You may think you're done. You may think you're destroyed. But God is working for your good. He's using what you're walking through right now for your good. What's ahead of you is good. He is working all things out for your good. And if you receive that, I want you to give God a hand clap of praise right now in this house. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, Lord, you're working it all out for my good. Hallelujah. Elevation to a higher position. Vindication from your enemy's opposition. But a realization of God's intervention. All of you in this room, all of you in this room have a desire that's been given by God. I don't know what it is, but I have preached these six messages because I felt led in my spirit. This was the summer that you begin to see your dream take shape. It may not, you may not get the prize next month, but I guarantee you will get the prize in God's timing I said you will get the prize in God's timing and when he does you're not going to look back and say well brother so and so helped me to get here you're not going to look back and say mama and daddy helped me to get here you're going to look back and you're going to say I'm here because of a miracle of almighty God he took a man that was down and out he took a woman that was on her last breath and turned it around and worked a miracle hallelujah you've got a dream i want you to join me at this altar come on as the body of christ everybody i just felt led to pray over this entire family as we put the final installment on this conversation I want you to join me at this altar and I want us together to sing this song. He's the God of miracles. And I want you to lift up your hands and I want you to lift up your voice. And as you do, I want you just to sing from the depth of your soul. Amen. That God is working a miracle. He's working a miracle. Come on. Amen. Join me. Let's begin to sing this together. And as we sing it, I want you to begin now to believe the miracle has taken shape. The miracle has taken form. The one who made the blind to see. Come on, sing it. 